Welcome. I am here with John Egan, who is the Director of Operations at Lucid Private Offices, and he's calling in from the Las Colinas office, which I've been in, which you remind yeah. me of. Yeah, it's really nice. I love the like the lobby and the colors and the kind of common areas. It's very nice. Yeah, pretty cool. We moved in this one in post one in Las Colinas that was more of an industrial park as one of our first locations and okay. moved here in, let's see, November, October of 2022. Okay. We've been here just about two years, a little over two years. Okay. Very yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Great location, two floors and about 25,000 square feet. And so about... yes, but we'll get the, the, yeah. the sort of portfolio discussion out of the way. Is 25,000 square feet kind of your typical floor plate now? Yeah, that's about it. We have one opening in North Dallas that just secretly got released or whatever, however we want to say, got released. That'll be a little more. I think that's 32, Ooh, 33, something like juicy. that. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that's a big one. That one's actually in a super cool building. We got to put our logo on it right on 75 and oh nice and ignore us you know that's nice really, totally yeah. Not a big deal well, it's cool you have yeah. how many locations in your sort of most mostly dallas houston but now you've got atlanta and phoenix yeah, how many locations are you up seven, in, are you 17 in dallas five okay. in houston we're uh, just about to open our third we got coo this week of our third one in uh, atlanta and buckhead and then mm -hmm. we have two opening in phoenix Two in Phoenix. Yeah. I'd love to talk yeah, about that. Phoenix yeah. is an interesting market. It's growing fast, but there's a decent amount of supply there. Hmm. There is. These two were great, fantastic location that Flip had really been working on and heard kind of soft nose for a while. And then they call back like, actually, we'll take your yes. Deal. Let's go. So Okay. And typically Flip likes to sign leases. Correct. We have some yeah. older deal management deals that are still in place. And they're operating fine for us, but we prefer leases. Yeah. Flip likes the upside. Yeah. It, it, there's, you know, there's good and bad of both. Yeah. Both aspects of it and ownership deal. In fact, I'm doing a session at Juicy with John Herring on that. Both of us have, we're just, we get along real well. And, and that's kind of fun to look at it. It's a lot less capital up front, of course, a lot yeah. less at risk, managing the risk of uh, yeah. not not putting that. But at the Wait, end, but John comes business. from an ownership model. They like that's to right. own. Yeah, no, yeah. I, that's going to be a great session. I love the sort of deal structure topics because, right, there's pluses and minuses for everything. And yeah, some people can't buy the building. So we'll do a deal or build the building or whatever. Yeah. Like steps into it. The flip yeah. has really, really worked that this is kind of bridging the middle that you're evaluating risk. You still have the business that's growing as an, as an asset itself, but it's not brick and mortar that, you know, you have a $370,000 HVAC deal that you didn't budget for that, you know, there's no, no one's going to pay that, you know, the, the landlord yep. pays that for us, yep. you know, in our deal. So that that's, yeah, it's, it's evaluating risk. It works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Tell us about your background. So I, I'm trying to remember what I met. Did I meet you at a GWA conference or a Juicy conference? We we met at a Juicy conference. Okay. Flip was uh, bragging about me, how great I am. Yes. He was doing that. So, <laughs> That's what I was like. Uh, I feel like it's because Flip was, yeah, talking about how amazing you were. Wait, I'm, in I'm, Seattle. We met in Seattle. Okay. Yeah, in Seattle. That's right. Yeah. Like right after the pandemic, I remember being so excited to like see humans. Yeah. And you might've been one of the first people I saw probably because Flip was sitting in the like lobby because he doesn't go to sessions. So that's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. how, how can we, you know, how can he let his hair be shown if he's like sitting right. in a session, you know, he doesn't. Okay, how do you know money. Flip? That might be a good place. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Tell us the story. So I grew up in New York. Actually, I grew up like one town over from Shlomo and David in like New really? York, New York suburbs. It's it's a small huh. now, okay. now in, East, in Texas, but kind of funny. It was, but yeah, I went to college, in Pennsylvania. I met my wife. We have um, been married twenty four years. We have six children, one boy and five girls. Uh, first part of my career, I got my master's in pastoral ministry and worked in churches and Catholic churches, and then moved to Texas to take over a uh, what was then a struggling Catholic summer camp. It was uh, living on a line of credit. Uh, I had a ministry experience. My my dad was an elevator constructor. He put the elevators in the world in the World Trade Center and many buildings in New York. It was like, okay. like grew up. He's an electrician. You know, we're just handy people. And my wife's 
very handy. She does art and she does, um, she actually does a lot of our art for, for our Lucid now. And that's kind of oh. where we get to that part in the story. Okay. Here. Um, but she's uh, very handy and can build stuff. So we built the camp and re rebuilt like all the cabins and a pool and dining hall. Right, and used your children as as absolutely free labor. See, yeah, we we built a chapel. Uh, and my like nine year old son at the time was like stuffing insulation into the ceiling and like on the scissor lift and nail guns and all this cool stuff. Like then we built a you know, thirteen thousand square foot dining hall and just really redid it. And now it's one of the largest. Catholic camps in the country. It was called the Pines Catholic Camp. So we were there for 12 years. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. Flip was that on was our board. Part of your... yeah. Wait, Flip was on your board. You just Yeah. Said. So he came out to camp and brought his kids and, and you know, he, he has seven kids. So he beat me by one. Basically I'm a Protestant. It's okay. You know, <laughs> he calls me that. So he and I became really good friends and, you know, vacationed and really had lots of fun together over the years. And We've had all sorts of staff challenges, and he was just a, a resource, a, a friend I'd call if I was struggling in my career or not thinking about different ideas. Yeah. He was he would always tell me stories of you know successes and failures he's had in his life, and we became really close. So, at a certain point, he invited Rana, my wife, to do some work for him, doing some interior design and art. And he just kind of kept employing her, and I left the Pines at a certain point and. Went to work for New York Life and got all my financial degrees and uh, licenses, I should say. And, you know, one of those things that doing insurance and financial products, like you have to have a wealth of connections. Like that's that's part of it. Just having people to yeah. call. And I had like 900 numbers in my phone from kids that worked for me for camp. And oh, you know, right. everyone needed yeah. plans and yeah. life insurance, all this good stuff. So did that for a couple of years. Rana was working for Flip and had her own uh, interior design business. And I was actually the first day of the year in, I guess, 22. And uh, I was like, new year. And I'm kind of coming in this new new like, year, new me. Yeah. New year, new me. I'm like, <laughs> I've got to call some people to have some money. And I'm like going through my list. I'm like, okay, you know, I've never called Flip about doing financial stuff with them, but like, I'm going to call my trainer and uh, like, how do I get a call? Like, he's a friend of mine. Like I've been on vacation with them and he's like, yeah. You know, so I call him and I call my manager. I'm like, how do you do this call to someone who's like this close to you? And he has the money. I don't want to sound like I'm trying to grab something, but you know, they're both like, he'll take your call. I'm like, okay. So I'm literally driving from my office to, or driving from a friend's house to my office. I'm like, I'm going to get to my office. I'm going to call. I look down at my phone. It says Flip Howard. I'm like, I didn't talk to him in months. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, gosh, you know. He's calling me like, Lord, tell me something. And because I was going to say, there's a higher power of sending a message here. <laughs> Gosh, I'm like, I, it just, I'm supposed not to call the message your boss wanted to hear, I'm guessing. Totally. Absolutely not. So then but we changed messages that day. And he said, you know, like, I've been thinking about you and just want to see if you'd be interested in coming in as our COO. And I'm like, wow, like I was actually going to call. See that coming, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was, no way that I, I, I thought that, that was in there. I'm like, well, let me talk to you. Like, let me think about this. And you said, we have to move to Dallas. I was in Tyler, which is East Texas. Oh yeah. And we had a co-working space go through our startup school from Tyler. I know, oh, I'd never heard of Tyler, Texas. It was called the hub. They closed. Oh, Long wow. story. They, they okay. set up in an old gym. I know that place. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. I, yeah, they came to me after they decided, you know, they were ready, getting ready to open. So it was a tricky model, but mm. a great, yeah, great team. Anyway, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So you're in uh, Tyler, so you'd have to move everyone. Uh, so yeah, so he said, yeah, you know, we, we, we wouldn't you move to Dallas? And I was like, okay, um, we're open to that. It was mid-school year. I said, we, you know, went home to our girls like, hey, do you guys want to wait to the end of the school year? Because we're moving to Dallas. They're like, let's go right now. So <laughs> this is like, we're leaving our, you know, two point whatever wow. percent interest rate. And it wasn't, wasn't pretty letting that go, but it's okay. And we moved out to Keller and we, we loved it. So we, we just kind of reshaped the vision for the business and really taking a lot of the things that we had at camp. We had great success. We were growing 15, 18% every year, uh, every summer at about, by the end we we're leaving, we had 1700 and I started, no, excuse me, 12, 1200 campers. When I started there and left with 3000 campers a summer. Wow. Oh, yeah, it was in uh, a new dining hall and, and a, a new, new dining hall, pool, <laughs> yeah. bathhouses, campus. Roads, everything, everything was changing. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so if you ever need to know anything about bed bugs or your listeners, find me on LinkedIn. I am a super expert in it. So I'll tell you whatever to do. This is, I feel like the, the insurance finance, like all that, that was like a blip on the, like, like what doesn't fit here? Was that ever going to be your long-term? Do you think? Well, it was, it was definitely, I, I feel like the Lord was really moving me to say, preparing me for this. It was understanding P&L statements. Oh, interesting. Business side, like, mm-hmm. like, okay, I understand. Yeah. And then you, you're able to speak the language with a lot more of your clients. Mm-hmm. Coming from a nonprofit world, Flip would say, he, he would have never stolen me from the camp because it would have been like, you know, like yeah. in this, on this board. And why would I take the yeah. guy who's the executive director? And yeah. then, so he said, oh, but you're with, you know, finance. I'll do that. Like, let you learn all that and then come on. And um, it's been great, actually, really. Um, I, I feel like um, that prepped me to, you know, be where I am today. It's interesting, right? Sometimes we don't know why or how the puzzle pieces are going to fit. You have to like do the next thing and have some faith, right? It's yeah. Life is Absolutely. fascinating in that yeah. way. Yeah. that It was a great two years and it built incredible relationships. I always say like, if you want to know who your friends are, start a business. You know, like that, that's really see people like, oh, I don't want to talk. Like I'm not selling you, whatever. You know, like, yeah. And some people but also like, you hey, like a work with role, right? You're selling. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of value to that in business. Yeah. yeah. I worked for CarMax for a year. And in fact, that's a fantastic company. And I use, I use many things I learned in that, in this probably 20 something years later, really it's, it's cool. It's the same stuff, you know? Yeah, totally. Uh, Okay. So, okay. Yeah. This is super interesting. Okay. So you, well, let's talk about it. So I'm interested you're in an ops role. So tell me about your role. Like what's your, what are your overall yeah. responsibilities and your kind of day to day? It's actually very similar to running a summer camp. I, <laughs> I will often call her managers. I don't do it so much anymore, but like the counselors, like no. the <laughs> are like locations and like <laughs> yeah. we have support staff, which is like the receptionist, yeah. the team coordinator. It's, it's actually really, really fun if we think of it like that. And and our team's very sick of me using camp stories. Camp analogies, like, oh, yeah. Camp this happened, you know, like, okay, One time no, at band you know? camp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got me. You can edit that one out. That's fine. No, that's great. Uh, no, that's, it is hilarious how often like we overcome problems and, and it's just the same stuff. That's, you know, we're kicking drunk clients out, just <laughs> to kick the bullies out, you know, dealing with, Disgruntled parents is just like dealing with disgruntled clients who don't like the billing or the Wi-Fi or the HVAC or whatever. It's de-escalating, having a great conversation, hearing their problem, and then walking away saying, glad I talked to John. I'm glad I talked to that manager or the regional director or whoever we have in that situation. Just, you know, we say this is like secular ministry. You're helping people feed their families by providing some office yeah. space in a good place. You know, Flip says oh, location matters and that, yeah. that's it's important. You know, where you're doing something in a place of beauty, you feel inspired, you know, working yeah. around other people that you may not be doing, you know, insurance or, you know, a therapist or, you know, financial advisor, or whatever the, the deal is they're doing, but you see people working, you think like, uh, you know, I wonder what they're doing in there. That's why we like a lot of glass, you know, the lucid, the light coming and that, that 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 presents something cool. They feel inspired by being around good people. So my job is doing all the onboarding of clients, having our our a great staff. There's there's turnover. It's not six figures right from the beginning. So lots of people use this as a stepping stone, yeah. and we're fine with that. We we in fact say Although that you have some team members that have been there for a long we time. Do. It's, we do. That's wild. Yeah, we do. Our executive team, half of them are made up from people who started. Answering the phones, you know, yeah, it's, it's uh, really fun being with you know, Andrea and Deb and Chelsea and Eli and Tasha, like just a fantastic team. People, you know, 15, 18 years with Flip, they're they're committed to him, and that was what made me say, the like, hair. I was in a career, like, yeah, no ceiling of what my salary could be, and you're like, I trust him, like, I, I he, he's a great person, and then you get into the industry and you see, like, oh, yeah, he's really well-respected, not just a a good friend of mine, but really someone who we all look to. We can still fight with them. We can still disagree (laughs) with them. He'll have the final say, but we can still disagree with them. So yeah, IT, we do lots of furniture choices too. So helping people get the right furniture. It's not just, you know, one four-legged desk. Uh Uh-huh. That's complicated. It sure is. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
when you don't know how uncomplicated the other one is, it's kind of nice, you know. <laughs> tea facilities, we have a staff of about 80 total, but probably 60 of them are on operations. Yeah. So we, and we have our own operating system for phones. And so we don't use any of the out of the box ones. Huh. So we have our own wow. program. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Wait, do you offer phone answering services? We do. Do you outsource do. that or you do that internally? No, we do it in house. It, I didn't know that. We've had mm-hmm. Cliff on the podcast and I'll put it, I'll link to it in the show notes because he's, yeah, I, I I have so, I just have to say, I have so much respect from, for the brand and the business because it's, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a great business. Like I always love, like love, love to sit, you know, with your team and just like sort of figure out like, what's the secret sauce here? Because you just run a really good profitable business that, you know, is expanding without any crazy outside funding, without any, you know, fake promises. Of, I was just like a really great business with a really great team. And we'll talk about the culture in a minute, but, and how, wait, wait do you, do you remember when the first location opened? What year it was? It's uh, uh, 2000. 2000. It's a, okay. Which is also a great story, which we will, I covered with Flip, but we won't cover it here, but I, I love the backstory. Okay. That's wild. 24 that's years. Mail, phone, uh, IT, um, and all of our, le- we have really good relationships with landlords uh, for the most part that, you know, when there are issues, we're, you know, we're good clients the to them and the they're, table. They're, yeah. they're, they want to work with us, you know, yeah. that sort of thing. We go in, like Flip went into Arizona and it was an easy sell. People want private, upscale, nice looking, you know, we're going to centers. I was going to say yeah. people. We have nice looking people too. Nice <laughs> looking centers. They're going to bring great people in to activate those spaces. And uh, he he's good. He's good at, at schmoozing with landlords and, and getting the right right locations. Totally. I want to be flipping my next life. I'm just <laughs> saying. Because he runs this great business, but uh, like, where, where could he not come to recently? He was like, oh, we had a, he was invited to a meeting I was invited to in San Francisco. He's like, skiing in some other country with one of his kids. He's like, can't make it. I know, tough yeah. life flip. <laughs> it was like a two day trip. Like, come on. In and out. Yeah, yep. that guy. Yep. Well, he, it's he's, he's, yeah, he's figured it out. Okay. So I'm super, I, I'm very excited to get, to get to hear your, your background because I didn't know the, you know, the backstory. But one of the reasons I reached out is because you posted to LinkedIn one day about joy and joy being one of Lucid's core values. And that just really struck me. And so I was like, I got to talk to John on the podcast. Can you, yeah, share a little bit about that. And I'm curious, like you're, you're doing operations, but obviously you bring something, you bring a really unique background to the company. So yeah, talk about like the, the, this joy concept and your core values and what you bring from your background. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're really upfront with people, even, even from the interview, even from the first interview about what some of our expectations are. We want to bring the right people on board, the, the stickiness, the retention. I would say the, the mom and pops do just way better job than we ever do because everyone knows the guy or the girl that's at the front desk or, or the, and that may be the owner, the owner. Yeah. You know, it's like, Oh gosh, it wouldn't break her heart. If I left, like, right. I, I want to do business with her. Yeah. So we have this structure where we have these big buildings that are gorgeous build outs. And in the beginning, everyone knew flip, like he was the guy and, uh, and just like we yeah. know him and we have this great connection with him. And at camp, it was, my name was big tuna. I, you, my office is spun the wrong way. I have this big sign that says big tuna. That was what everyone knew me at camp. And, there was a great connection like, oh gosh, I, summer wouldn't be the same without seeing Big Tuna and I get to be their confirmation sponsor and parents invite me over to visit, you know, like all this great connection of the guy from summer camp. And it was that in the beginning, we really are, are saying like, hey, we're, we're growing as a business model, but we still want that mom and pop feel where everyone knows the, the guy or the girl at the front desk that she's going to take care of you. Uh, I'll just say she, because they're like 80% she, but uh, we have some great guys in there too. But I, so I'm from New York. I usually say, I'm going to say guys. So uh, <laughs> guys, okay. Whoever's in the front desk. So we try and create that. So when we're onboarding people or interviewing to bring the right people into our culture, we have to look for certain innate, built, um, uh, very visible characteristics of this person that's going to represent our brand. So when someone comes in for a tour, like, I want to work with her. She's incredible. Like she's, you know, the the smiliest person, overwhelmingly outward joy. 
So we we tell people right from the interview, how how is that? Easy at camp to say, hey, <laughs> you know, when you're greeting cars, they're pulling in and dropping off their eight-year-old who's kind of tearing up. Like, yeah, you want to overwhelm that mom or dad with with joy, like, oh, she's going to be fine, you know, yeah. that sort of thing. So we have that first impression of what you're seeing. We focus a lot in, in doing build outs that when you step off the elevator, like, oh, gosh, this is awesome. Yeah. That first impression is really, really important. Going back to camp, y'all are feeling like my managers. I'll, I'll do the camp analogy, but we would notice significantly like nine out of 10 kids that would go home from homesickness rode in on the bus. They came to our business office in Dallas. And the first impression was like our accountant and like, oh, here, log John Egan. Okay. Get on this bus here. And then like for two hours, they're like, I'm going to miss my mom. This, this is going to uh, suck. Like they've, really- they're steeped in this, like, not so great feeling for a while until, yeah. Totally. Then I get off the bus and as cheery as these like 20 year old girls and guys are like, it's can't still- overcome. Yeah. yeah. So like by Sunday night, they're like, can I call my mom? I want to go home. So we talk the opposite in co-working that that first we're spending a lot of money to get that lead to become a tour. We call them visits, but that lead to come in for a visit, like hundreds, maybe even over a thousand dollars per person to come in and say, what is that going to look like? So yes, the aesthetic, the build out, the reception area, having enough space, but not too much space. But then that person behind the front desk. They got to look good, your 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 dress nice, your hair's nice, you know, makeup, whatever, but then the outward joy. Can you show that person like, I'm so happy you're here. Us in co-working, our, our big battle is uh, what we're seeing. People that are turning in notice are saying, nah, I don't use it. <sighs> well, how do we create that stickiness? Because y- you have this excitement about, you know, joining a gym in mm-hmm. January 1. Right. And by, you know, March 12th, you're like, I haven't been there in four weeks, I may as well cancel it. Like if the the girl saying, hey, come to Beachbody, it's five in the morning and texting you and saying, you know, do this. All right, I better go. I, I did sign up for a reason. We use that analogy a lot. Like you at the front desk, the manager of the center have to be the resource to say, you made an investment in your business to get this, you know, 120 square foot office. Come in, like come to the happy hours. You do, you're a you know, a, a new attorney or a, or a insurance salesman, like you got to meet this other guy that does this, that like you're that resource for them to create a better business model for everyone. So we're, we're that outward joy, like you're not scared to like, ah, I don't want to text this guy. Like you're probably not giving me a right fit. You know, like you should be saying everyone's name when they come in. Yeah. Good morning, Jamie. Like Good no restraint on that. Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. We, you know, I run the community manager program and to your point, lots of, we do have, a, we have some men and we embrace them. The Not too tight, I hope that's right. Yeah. I think her name is Michelle from Work Lodge and she talked about, I love this word. It's not exactly what you're talking about, but she said they like to balance their team so that they have one like galvanizer mm. and that person is show no fear around like walking through the office. Hey, it's, you know, we're having a member breakfast or, Hey, you got to meet Joe. And it's, she, I love that term, but you can picture that person. It's kind of what you're describing. Like, yeah, it doesn't bother me at all to text people and say, Hey, we haven't seen you in two weeks. What's going on, Fred? That's a specific personality that doesn't have that any sort of like, you know, ego, anxiety, whatever it is around like doing that outreach. And it's just such a good fit. But well, how do, so how do you how do you uh, screen for that? OK, so uh, a couple of questions we use. So I, I love that. I love e- even if because you want someone that still has prioritization and organization. Yes. Like, right. Sort of stuff. Like just someone <laughs> yeah. that's super joyful that can knock on doors right. like a happy hour like. You know, my 19 year old could do that. Not but, paying the you know, bills either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. So, and then also saying like, hey, your rent's late. You know, so there's two sides of yeah. having th- that personality that you're confident in saying that. But one of the managers used to say, you got to pay your rent because your rent pays me. You know, like I love that boldness too. Like, great. You know, if you don't, you don't pay Flip, he can't yes. pay me. So right. like, yeah, how do we look for it? So what I use a lot of questions that we used to use in camp interviews. I, I, I plagiarized a little bit. So one of them is I say like, do you have a best friend? Okay. Someone says, no, I really don't have a best friend. 
probably not going to be a good fit for this. Most people, I'd say 90%, 90 plus percent say yes. If if they say no, sometimes it's quantified like, well, I have a lot of girlfriends, I have a lot of guy friends. Like, okay, but can you narrow it down to one? Like pick one. Again, it's can you make decisions on, on, on the spot? Okay. If I were to ask your best friend, what is your best quality? Uh, Jamie, how would you answer that question? If I were to ask your best friend, what's your best quality? What would they say? Oh, geez, you're being like a geo. I'm, I'm putting you on. To come. Yeah. Right, there, you go. there we go. <laughs> Darn it. What would they say? I think like, yeah, uh, really like connected to them. Like, you know, want to know like what's going on with them? How are they feeling? Like, just like in tune, you know, and there if they want to celebrate something or, you know, or need some support. So just, yeah, like that connection, which is we were talking about maybe before we hit record is not that easy these days. No. Absolutely. And, and that would be a perfect answer we'd be looking for. You I would be a great community manager. Someone <laughs> at our Dallas Galleria Towers location. Uh, mm -hmm. It's beautiful. No, um, it, it is. It's like, it, it's going to tell you like, how does this person get along with even their closest friends? I, I sometimes do. I think you even talked with this in, in the community manager university, which I did. I didn't graduate from it, but I watched all your videos. One of them was, tell me about your house. Or that might have been on one of your podcasts. Oh, like, yeah. How is yes. your organized? If I went into your kitchen, yes. would you say, what, how is it organized? Or, oh, my house is a mess. But my business life is, you know what? Your business right. life is probably not organized. So you're like, I love that. I think that's a fun one. It kind of gets into it. I like to just get into a conversation with them that, you know, could they pass that airplane test? Would you take a two or three hour airplane ride with them and no AirPods? Like, okay, I would, you know, that, that sort of thing. Yeah, just really like getting to know them and and it can they carry on a good conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So can you I would just love your perspective because it's a hard, it's a challenging problem around that tension that you brought up. Like we need them to be like really compelling to members and we need them to be very organized and be able to on follow all the processes. Yeah. How do how do you sort of solve for that? Again, a lot of times it is, what, the way I throw it out, again, in interviews, because that's kind of where I am, and then regionals do the coaching and, and all the rubrics of kind of what we need okay. to get better at. So, And that's maybe what listeners might be listening, like, I don't even know how to hire the right people. I, I say, here's our core values. Pick one or two that maybe speak to you that you say, like, I, I like that one, or I, I've experienced that hospitality or owner mentality is one of my favorites as well. Mm -hmm. And then talk to me on that, like, and maybe one you want to grow in. So I'm always interested. It doesn't matter to me which one they pick. Again, can they make decisions on their own? Someone's like, ah, oh, I like all of them. Uh, can I just, you know, tick them off and, and check them off? Like, okay, that's fine. But I, I love to hear, you know, where they've had issues in the past, either with organization, like I wouldn't call myself organized. You're probably not going to pass this interview, you know, like yeah. I need people <laughs> who are going to be organized, you know, can follow simple directions. Flip likes. I like, I'll say flip likes, but he's the boss. Like nothing on the countertops, like very clean totally. space, no candy dish, no succulent plant or, you know, a, a sign that says there's happy hour, like just come in and make it very clean. So can I give you a direction? How do you take coaching? Can you emotionally do it? Are you going to cry to your boyfriend on the drive home? Like, you know, Talia yelled at me today. Like, no, she didn't. She told you to answer the phones with a smile on your face. So really the, the ideas that we want to create, we introduce it in the interview. I read countenance and, and, and body language and, and even tone of how they're hearing and responding to me. They can be too much or they can be too little. And, and that's going to kind of get us to be where those people are. I think one of the challenges is when someone comes in and we have to coach them. It's easy to coach someone like, hey, can I show you how to reorganize your email box? Deb is awesome at it. She'll get on 20 minute Zoom with you and you know, screen share and boom, you go from 700 inbox to 30. Keep it under 50, you know, that, that sort of thing. The joy one is hard to coach, Jamie. I, I'd, I'd say we probably probably have let go of folks. Well, right, you more. can't, right, you can't produce joy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and slip through. I, and it's really hard. Like, hey, I've asked you to smile. And there's a there's a weird <laughs> tension with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you know, like it there's a there's a weird tension. Like, I need you to show this that that that's part of the experience that we're yeah. doing. And 
maybe some of the stress gets to them a mm-hmm. little more. I don't know. Wait, so do um, you, you find people can produce joy in an interview, but then maybe it doesn't, it's not persistent. Yeah. And that's I, tricky, right? Yeah. It is. And and maybe I'm coming in too hopeful because like yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Resume but is that or, confirmation bias? I would like yes. to hire someone. It would be really convenient if it was you. I see yes. the joy. I see it. I see it. <laughs> You're in. Ah, I know. <laughs> or you know, they worked at, you know, a, a, a very fancy hotel or, or, a, right. or a great restaurant or something like yeah. that. Oh heck. Like yeah, on paper, them. you're like, this is it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh yeah. It's or they have the look, like just in their eyes, but then you know, mm. their their lips aren't yeah. smiling, you know. It's it's yeah. it's interesting. But find the right people really does sell the center. Yeah. Uh, when someone comes in and you can tell in the first couple of minutes if they can afford it, but you know, if they want to do the work with us. That that's yeah. really important for us to do that. Yeah, we're 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 growing. It's still having a lot of turnover. That's that's always Gary V on LinkedIn. I don't, I, I don't even know how to pronounce his last name, but he always talks. You know, what I'm talking about Vayner- yeah, Gary Vaynerchuk. Vaynerchuk. Yeah, yeah. I think he's, he's a Jersey guy too. He is. You're he's not Jersey, Jets but you know, uh, yeah. Well, he's a Jets <laughs> fan like myself, which is like the hardest. Oh, is he? My husband is also. Oh. Uh, did we talk about this? I think My we did. Husband- he's a Giants fan, right? No, he's a Jets and Mets. Oh, oh, Jets and Mets. That's oh, Jamie. My yeah. heart will come oh, visit you. You get the patch. I'm gonna come out to California. <laughs> it's a hard life. It's a it's a hard it life. Yeah. Wow. You my, don't talk my... about the Jets a lot because they're it's hard mm. to. But yeah, he well, he grew up on Long Island. His parents were from Greenpoint, <sighs> and so I think that's where that comes from. And he's stuck with it. So too funny. Yeah. yeah and now you're in Texas and you're still hanging in there. Anyway, yeah, we, we went to that Jets Cowboys game and they lost like forty to nothing or oh, something. Yeah, something. exactly. <laughs> My daughter said, "Dad, you've never even seen the Jets in the Super Bowl. Like seven years before I was born, they were in the Super Bowl." So <laughs> painful, painful. I could go on on that, but the the I forget what I was talking about. Oh wait, we were talking. Wait, oh Gary V on LinkedIn. Yes, I don't think I follow him in, on LinkedIn. I'll have. Oh, to he's great. Exactly. One of the things he talks about is like, hey, there's no secret to hiring the right people. He said, I've had people go through like seven interviews and, oh, gosh, this is the right person. And they're fired after three days. Like, it, you just move on. It's nothing personal. You just have to run the process. That's and right. then you just have to know sometimes you're going to get it wrong. It's it hard because I, I, but I sense that you have a good, you're very intentional. You probably got a lot of experience from your camp role. Do you look for, if somebody has camp counselor on their resume, are oh you gosh. all in on it, that? That is, if, if I'm, I'm t- listen, listeners listen to this, the the decision making, the processing, de escalating, teamwork, the the long hours and low pay, no. like to understand the value of, of what what working towards a mission is is all about. Uh, if someone worked at camp, I always tell my kids that work for me now they're all like thirties and forties now, but like that when they worked for me like. Put this on your resume. Talk about examples like, hey, when have you overcome something? Well, let me tell you about a camp I worked at. Because if you connect with that person giving the interview, like, oh, I was a camp guy. Or I was a camp girl. Oh, you were. Where would you go? You you totally know, get it. Thing, yeah. Like, wow, wow, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, late nights and swine flu and bed bugs and, you know, <laughs> like the cabin disasters <laughs> and the dining hall flooding and all this stuff. Like, well, we're going to get through this. You know, that that is such a great skill set. So, Hiring people that have a, an experience in camp is, oh gosh, they're worth Wait, their weight. So, so have any of your kids been camp counselors? My my son was a support staff. He did that okay. for one summer. And then my daughter was a CIT, a counselor in training. My okay. Son, so I have one who's, he's an electrician now. And then my oldest daughter is at Arkansas. I need an electrician in the family. That's useful. It's awesome. So he, yeah. Yeah, he's done so much work for us. He's now hooking an air conditioner up in our garage right now. Like, okay, great. Yeah. It's so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Totally. Yeah. And I want to meet your wife. Wait, so you did you mention your wife does some like artwork in the space? Yeah, so like all of our galleries in our boardroom, ronaegandesign.com. She has her, her website. Some of her pictures of what like Flip has commissioned her, but some huge pieces. In fact, she was in his office one time and saw this large uh, art in his office and she commented on it. He told this story of like, I wish I could, you know, build that or something. She got, she said, I could do that for you. And he said, all right, well, I'll commission you, you pay me something. And then painted her one. And he's like, well, okay, I want, you, I want those in our boardrooms. 
in our McKinney uh, Craig Ranch one in North Dallas, she did like everything is more and more creative, a lot of different mediums. She bought like this like history of the office where she poured what is the pores on, like the acrylic clear acrylic over old phones and oh. computers and computers and laptops and all this cool stuff that like 3D are it really neat wow. stuff but a lot of big pieces like grapevine she has one that's like 12 feet long and eight feet tall or something just that's really her work I think is so yeah. incredible we had a member in my Palo Alto space that imported she supported Indian artists like artist from India. From India. Yes. Wow. And she had some pieces in, she would rotate through sometimes. And it was amazing, like the transformation of how it felt to just have like real art that wasn't sort of, you know, from whatever, a catalog or wherever people get yeah. <laughs> corporate art, you know, like real art. Incredible. That wow. idea, just seeing some different colors and, and different mediums and 3D texture stuff you want to touch, you know, it really, yeah. it's fun. She really enjoys it. She works for a designer up in uh, Pennsylvania full time and then does art at night and morning and raising six kids. Well, really. Yeah, this really, I cannot, I don't like, wait. <laughs> you should have her on the podcast. She She's much more interesting than I am, but she's, yeah, we only have four at home now, so. Right. Well, that's what Flip says. Flip was like, well, you know, the older ones kind of take care of the younger ones now. It's like no big deal. <laughs> okay. I mean, I have one and can barely keep up with like gymnastics <laughs> schedules and, you know, this and that. And and how so, old? Oh, she's 12. 12. Yeah. Sixth okay. grade. Okay. Yeah. Right in the it's time. It's yeah. Good times. Sixth I grade cannot grade. imagine life with five girls <laughs> plus your wife. In yeah. It, it it really is. It, it's a lot of joy. They are, they're loud, but it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. They're, they're, they keep us very full of energy. We, yeah. we, play one, what, and they all have different personalities. One of them pays, does the dishes, all the dishes at our house for 20 bucks a week. This is like the best deal ever. She's like, I want Lululemon skirts and we don't have money for Lululemon. Right. The time, yeah, so. I mean, I know my daughter started she had that conversation this morning. I was like, Okay, we're there's gonna have to be some sort of value exchange yes. here if we're getting into yeah, we need I need, you know, to update my wardrobe. <laughs> we don't need to touch the dishes and she just does them. It is a fair trade. Flip talks about that even commerce, great. You know, they <laughs> you go to McDonald's and you pay the guy five bucks your sandwich, you give right? it that's a fair trade. We and we want that in office space as well. I it works with my 13 year old as well. So like I don't want to do, I don't want to do the dishes. It is worth it for me to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I like it. And it teaches, yeah. right. It teaches them the value of, yeah, this is how life works. That's totally. Right. Yeah. Sure. I love um, it. Yeah. So are you going to be out at the Juicy Conference? I am. Are you going? Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Really I have not booked a place to stay. I have my flight. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get on me, that. Where are you staying? Flip. I don't remember the name of the hotel, but Flip and Luke Wills and I, we yeah. got to okay, bunk fine. up. So we we share a room and we nice. bro out. Last night at the MGM for GWA, I had this, we, we had this big suite that was very fun. It was, we hardly went to sleep, but it does like to have a good time at the conferences. He does. Should have Luke on again too. He's been on pretty recently, but not since he's been at Lucid. So you guys have yeah. such a fun team and he's doing yeah. great. He's like super involved in the Atlanta market. I always see him posting about like Atlanta co-working day and he's all over it. Yeah. He's been like a, a total blessing to our team doing the outbound yeah. marketing and yeah. get messages from me, which I'm, you know, whoever I am, but it kind of means something like, oh, the director of operations call it, you know, that that works. I actually brought our marketing director from the Pines, from the camp over oh, here. Nice. He does our marketing too. That's so he, fun. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anthony Gerhardt. He 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 worked with me and, and Flip for five or six years at the camp. And actually several of the counselors now work for us as managers and, and CCs and facility team, all sorts of people that have kind of come in. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Real excited. So a great team. Um, yeah. Luke shared a little bit of, that's why I should have him on to talk about. I, I just, I, I mean, I think that's the other fun thing about your business is not everybody, well, your brand and, and, and lucid is you've got the scale to do some pretty fun things. You know, you've got a great team. You can, you sort of have this like executive team, you know, level of talent, Luke shared some really cool, to your point, like outbound stuff he was doing on LinkedIn. And I was like, ooh, this is interesting, you know, but you've got sort of some resources to support, 
you know, some of that learning and experimentation and Flip shared some really fun insights about like weeks that have holidays in them and how sales go down and like just sort of the analytics he's doing, like looking at, you know, in between ski trips to, you know, Europe or whatever. He's he's yeah, looking at the numbers. <laughs> some of the new, yeah, we're always looking at numbers. And, yeah. and one of the things we we have really been working on and, and jury's still out uh, on this is creating the most flexible office agreements or service agreements in in the industry. Flip's brother, Taylor, was our yeah. sales, sales director for a few years. And he's oh, awesome. Wait, is, he, is he not there anymore? He's not there anymore. You know who our sales manager is? Ooh. Flip Howard. Flip he, in, okay. He, he did. So even ah, as president, okay. CEO, owner of the company, really wanted to, you know, get his fingerprints get in everything in, in the company. Yeah. And like, I want to lead the sales team. So okay. Uh, it's awesome. So it has some support and we're, we're all creative and we have the, uh, a group of CX or our client experience team okay. that help out with like virtual office sales. We call them sale team six. Isn't that the best name ever? Yeah. Sale team six. Like I yeah. wish I created that was flip, but he, but uh, doing that, but creating some flexible agreements. So we have one that's like a, you know, 60 day out, you pay a little over premium and then. Like I'm uh, only committing for 60 days. Well, you're committing for a year. But okay. If at any point you say, hey, oh, I got an out. out. Yeah. Got here's an out. My, you pay 10% premium. And then we have an ultra flex that is, you know, zero yeah. day. Yeah. So that day. So again, more premium. It's been good and bad. There's been so maybe more churn with it, but would they have ever signed with us either? <laughs> right. Kind of, kind of exciting. Huh. The, the revenue we're drawing from the premiums has been pretty good. Interesting. Um, it is right. a, it is interesting. I'll, we'll see once it's a year in to see, yeah. you know, how it's washed out. But I love in this industry, I mean, you guys have been doing this for 24 years. And so you're still like, okay, how can we innovate on this a little bit? What's new? Yeah. What's next? Okay. So, that, so that'll be my final question. What yeah. are you most excited about mm -hmm. right now in the industry? Well, I, I, I love just like in camp and here I go back to that again, but the competition is not really competition. We, we know that the rising tide lifts all boats. Yeah. So we want others to succeed, even the evil empire companies, like that, that they're going to go to those companies and say, oh, this actually sucks. Let me try another one. These look cooler or these match my group. You know, we had a client that, great client at our location in the Woodlands that created a space that was a co working space for just lawyers, like. If they're not going to fit in our space, like, I know yeah, Rachel. <laughs> oh, you know them? Oh, you do logical. Yeah. Yes. So like they're, they're great folks. Like, and, and, you know, our, our idea was like, Hey, that's, I hope you succeed. And he may have people that, you know, he could send over to us and if some, yeah. we don't have the right, you know, mm -hmm. motif in us. I'd send them to him that, that, that sort of could work, yeah. you know, collaboratively. I, I, I love that. If that continues, and people are having good experiences in camp. If someone had a bad experience in camp, sometimes you'd write that off. And it could be for any business type experience that you're, you know, you're making a substantial investment in. We we want them to be good experiences in this. You know, we have an idea in our company that that the world would be a better place if there was lucid private offices in every major city and yeah. we had hundreds and hundreds of people that are coming in and feeling inspired, wanting to to work, being around other people, building friendships. Um, you know, especially post COVID. Yeah. Just uh, guys, especially, you know, to, to make friends with other guys, it's, it's so much to say, would you want to, you know, get a drink after work or like, you want to just try get that one. burger place with me? Yeah. It's weird, but you're never going to do that if you're at home. The right. Since you'd had that people are going to lions club and, and, and right. things like that to, to create Knights of Columbus or whatever, yeah. you know, church numbers are down, everything's down even after COVID. Like this is a great experience to be able to build some community and, and you know, go home. Like, you know, I made a friend today, you know, like, this is great. You know, like that, that sort of maybe even do business with people. Like we want to create that, that experience wherever we can. So in new markets, you know, we bring the right people in that are going to help create good communities, uh, professional communities, not just hacky sack and beer pong and stuff. We, we you know, really doing business with people. That's, that's what we want to create. That, that's what I'm excited for. I love it. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time to do this. And I can't wait to see you in a few weeks yeah. in Salt Lake City. And if anybody's listening and wants to meet John in person, Flip's yeah, hosting John, a party. John, no. <laughs> we're, 
We're leading a session on or a panel on the finance of co-working. Awesome. Management deals and yeah. Liz and Storm yeah. have been putting together a great, great lineup. Yeah. I'm on Tuesday Tuesday morning. Are you Tuesday or Wednesday? I'm Wednesday morning. Okay. I think yeah. I'm Tuesday morning. And Gio informed me that he's flying in Tuesday morning. I'll Just like, for your session. Look at that. Well, I mean, in time for our session, I hope, because we're at like 1030 or something. I was like, maybe you'll be my plan B. I need a okay, plan no. B. <laughs> you might get recruited. No, <laughs> if you could get flip, if you could get flip into the room. He might do it, but I doubt he'll even step foot would in. be a good one. He'll be in the lobby yeah. flipping his hair. <laughs> anyway, great to see you. Can't wait uh, to see you in Salt Lake. And thanks for making the time and sharing your perspective and your story. All right. God bless you, Jamie. Thanks so much.